fuels our fire even more. I promise you, I'll be right back here tomorrow at 5.30, chanting even more, and I guarantee there's going to be a lot more people with me. Well, they're coming back tonight because of what happened last night down in Bloomington. A peaceful protest interrupted by chaos as a car plows into protesters. Good afternoon, I'm Lauren Casey. It was a terrifying scene just as a peaceful protest in Bloomington was ending last night. A red car drives through a line of protesters in the street. Two of them were hit, one still in the hospital this midday. And our Cameron Riddle was at the scene covering last night's protests when things took a turn for the worse. He joins us this midday to talk all about it. Now, Cameron, this of course started as a protest over that allegation of an attempted lynching near Lake Monroe. It looked like every Everything was going to begin and end peacefully last night when everything changed out of the blue. Take us back there. Yeah, everything changed all of a sudden, Lauren. Good afternoon. Uh, so, you know, a hun hundreds of people came down to the Monroe County uh, Courthouse to protest that video uh, in which Vox Booker was being attacked and his attackers had not been arrested. Protesters were asking for an arrest, but also for the officers involved to be fired. With all of that said, the protest went on for several hours, marching through the streets, extremely peaceful, no incidents. And the guy that you just heard from a second ago is Patrick Ford. He was one of the organizers. He was just on the microphone, probably five minutes before the incident, telling everyone to let's go home. Uh, let's end things on a good note. It's been peaceful. It's been a success. So let's end on a high note. But let's also make sure no one goes to their car alone, have a walking buddy, because there are people down here who don't necessarily want to see us down here. So with that, there was an, an air of let's be careful for the rest of the night so that nothing happens. And not five minutes later did all of a sudden uh, this car starts speeding down the street there on Walnut. Uh, from the different videos that are on social media, the, the people who got hit were on top of that red car. They were at 4th and Walnut, so two blocks south of just where I was, I was at 6th and Walnut right next to my car. And all of a sudden I hear vroom at a high rate of speed. So there I'm like, there's something coming. I look up and all I see is this car booking it, just cooking right past me. But I see a guy hanging on to the side of the window. What I couldn't see because how fast that car was coming is that there was a woman hanging on for her life on the hood of that car. When the driver got to the corner of six, she made a hard right turn and that threw both a Jeff Stewart, who was the guy hanging on the window, he's okay, somehow uninjured, threw him off of the car. The other woman, we don't know her name, but she was taken to the hospital. Seems like she was knocked unconscious for a little bit. But in that moment, as that car was coming through the crowd of people who were still in the street, still on the sidewalk, coming at a high rate of speed, absolute chaos, Mark. Well, Cameron, obviously a scary situation down there last night. As we heard from that gentleman earlier in the video, he said they're going to be back out there this evening down in Bloomington. What do we know so far about the plans and how does the city plan to keep people safe while they're demonstrating? Well, first, in most of these protests, even the ones we've seen here in Indianapolis, the police typically keep their distance. So in, in this instance, um, the police were a couple of blocks away because the response was almost instant. There didn't seem like there was time for anybody to call 911 before lights and sirens kicked in. So that tells me that there were some police members in plain clothes in the crowd. Uh, because before you know it, lights and sirens were coming, um, hauling it from down the street. So I think that's one tactic that we're going to continue to see is that even when you don't see the police, they are there. Uh, again, some of these protests are because of police brutality and people are unhappy with the police. So the police don't necessarily want to put themselves right up against that because we've seen as what happened in Indianapolis, uh, things can turn can change quickly when, when tensions are high and emotions are high. So with that, the police will probably still uh, be watching um, and in the crowd, but at a safe distance. We'll see if that changes tonight in light of what happened. There was no traffic control or anything provided by Bloomington police. These protesters have kind of started their own medical and police forces um, throughout these protests who have been blocking the street. But as I said, this thing had just ended officially. And that's when this happened about five minutes after. So the protesters are saying, hey, we're coming back today at 530 because they weren't done in the first place getting justice for Vox Booker. As they said, no one had been arrested. 
um, and they want some action, some kind of suspension or firing of the DNR officers who decided not to arrest Booker's attacker. So you have that issue was gonna bring them back tomorrow anyway. Now you have this issue, the woman in that red car has not been found. Bloomington police sent out a press release about an hour ago saying they are still looking for the driver of that car. So the fact that that driver is still out on the loose and there's a protester that's been sent to the hospital with injuries is only going to fuel the energy for people to go back to Bloomington and continue to protest for now these two different incidents over the span of a couple of days all that today at 5 30. all right well cameron we know we will be back out there thanks for joining us this midday and stay safe well as we told you these protests come after a man who serves on monroe county's human rights commission says that he was attacked it's all part of a video that people around the world have now seen it shows several men holding vox booker who cameron mentioned against the tree with his arms behind his back booker says the group threatened to lynch him while shouting white power and racial slurs he says friends and other bystanders yelled at the attackers to let him go and he believes that saved his life the department of natural resources and the monroe county prosecutor's office both say that they are investigating this. We'll have much more on this developing story on the IndyChannel.com and throughout the day today.